Greetings, fellow mortals and Disney enthusiasts. Today is January 31st, 2021, and this is episode three of the Two Foolish Mortals podcast. My name's Kat, and I'm so glad you've decided to materialize here today. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. This is a weekly podcast where we talk about travel, Disney, and making the most out of your next Walt Disney World vacation. Now, I'm coming here today with a bit of a bonus episode. So if you have listened to our previous episodes, you know that I post every Saturday at 5 a.m. Central. But once in a while, a topic will come along that I want to devote an entire episode to. And that's what has happened this week. So that's that's what I'm doing. I'm coming to you with this bonus episode. As I'm sure you've seen in the title, Today we're talking about traveling during the pandemic, and more specifically, traveling to Walt Disney World. Now, before we get going on this conversation, I want to get a couple things out of the way. First and foremost, I know that a lot of people come here to listen to this podcast or to visit the Two Foolish Mortals website or other websites that are talking about Disney as a way to escape. There is a lot of craziness happening in all of our everyday lives right now. And talking about Disney and and just fun things is a way to not focus on things that are out of our control. I get it. I feel exactly the same way. That said, there are some things that need to be talked about um, that maybe we don't want to talk about, but I don't want to ignore them completely because they're part of visiting Walt Disney World. So that's why we're here today. Like I said, this is an important conversation to have. And so I want to have it. Don't worry, though. These discussions are likely far and few in between. So this isn't like something we'll be focusing on all the time here on the podcast or on the website. Second, I want to be very clear that I'm sharing my personal thoughts and feelings with you today. I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm not an authority on the pandemic or anything like that. So if you're looking for anything other than an opinion, I recommend checking the CDC website. I'll have links available in the show notes at twofoolishmortals.com slash podcast. So please check that out. With that out of the way, let's jump into today's topic. So as most listeners know, here in the United States, we are currently still in the throes of the COVID-19 pandemic. As of recording this, vaccines have begun to roll out, but it's been slow going and there's still quite a ways to go before we approach anything that resembles normal again. Now, for me, the pandemic has been nothing to mess with. Um, I, I take it very seriously and I do everything I can to keep me and my family safe. That said... I've asked myself a question that I'm sure that you've probably asked yourself a few times as well, and that is, would I visit Walt Disney World during the pandemic? Now, I think it's a very fair question to ask. I think it's a question that a lot of Disney enthusiasts, especially those like me who had trips planned during 2020 and had to have them canceled, um... I think it's a question that people like us are asking ourselves, you know, is this something that we would do? Would we travel to Walt Disney World currently, even though COVID-19 is still a thing and, and whatnot? And so sometimes making those decisions and deciding what's right for you is, is difficult, especially if you're only in your own head. I know I like to hear the opinions of other people and I like to have kind of these broad conversations where we can like openly discuss feelings and thoughts. So that's, that's what we're doing here today. I want to get my thoughts out there. And um, hopefully it's, it's helpful to those of you who are still on the fence or, or are trying to decide how exactly you feel. So let's start off by talking about this very short list that I have. These are three questions that I ask myself when I'm deciding if there's a place I'm going to go or if there's a business I'm going to work with. So number one, is the business, and in some cases the patrons, taking the threat from COVID-19 seriously? Number two, are there health and safety measures in place? And number three, is there follow through with those health and safety measures? Now I realize that 
even with health and safety measures in place, there are still risks out there. And goodness knows, risk has always been part of doing pretty much anything in life. But even prior to the pandemic, I was still paying attention to certain health and safety things and how they were being handled. So for example, you know, if you have people handling your food and, and you don't feel like a restaurant is clean, you're probably not going to go there. And, and it's pretty much the same way I feel now. Now, fortunately, when we talk specifically about Walt Disney World, all of these boxes seem to be checked. I know I, I haven't personally been there since the beginning of the pandemic, but spending some time looking at the policies and even seeing some videos that have come out where people are walking through Walt Disney World, you can see that not only are they taking COVID-19 seriously and are there health and safety measures in place, but there's definitely follow through as well. And that makes me feel really good about the potential of visiting Walt Disney World, even in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, I am a firm believer that you can't see everything when you're watching YouTube videos, but I do think that if you're curious about what exactly is going on, I would encourage you to check out some of the videos of Walt Disney World right now. Um, especially some of the live streams, you can check out, you know, people walking through the parks and you can see just that there are people wiping down surfaces. You can see that there are mar uh, marks in place to make sure that people are being socially distanced. And um, I feel pretty good about that. There's also a lot of opportunity to be outdoors at Walt Disney World, which is a good thing too. Obviously, there are some rides and experiences that are indoors, but... From what I've been hearing, a bulk of the queues are being kept outside. So people aren't really kind of congested indoors like they, they would be normally, which I think is also really great. So just another health and safety measure that I think is, is good. It makes me feel great about um, the potential of visiting Walt Disney World. Of course, that's just part of the equation. The other part is actually getting there. And that's where things can get a little tricky for different people, myself included. I'm, I'm still not 100% on where I stand when it comes to the whole transportation part. So there are two options that I would consider when it comes to getting to Orlando, Florida. The first is to drive. I've driven there before, and we're actually talking all about driving to Disney on the Two Foolish Mortals website. We just started scratching the surface and we're going to talk a lot more about it in the coming weeks. So be sure to check that out if you're curious about that. And of course, we'll talk more about it here on the podcast every week. Um, every time you see uh, one of those posts go live. But, you know, there are two things that have me not really wanting to drive to Disney. And if I if I were to take a trip in the immediate future, there are two reasons that I probably wouldn't. The first is because, well, it's about to be February. And since I live in the northern part of uh, the country, it is not a good time to be driving. This is the time of year where we get lots of snow and ice and I just don't like the idea of having to drive home through really nasty winter weather. It's not for me. I also don't like the idea of potentially having to stop at like a little motel somewhere that even on the best of days are sketchy when it comes to cleanliness. Having COVID-19 around doesn't really make me feel very good about that, but that's a discussion for another day. The second, the second reason that I don't really lean toward driving, aside from financially, because flights are much more reasonably priced, priced right now, is just the amount of exposure there is to different places. You're stopping a lot when you're driving. You're stopping in a lot of different places. You're being exposed to a lot more people than you would be, believe it or not, if you were to fly. And I think that's something to really take into consideration. Although... I know that you can accommodate for that. There are things you can do. But for me, the, the two things kind of being pushed together, um, 
the weather and like I said, having to stop multiple times, it just doesn't seem ideal in my opinion. Now, option number two is to fly and currently it's the most reasonable and most affordable option. Personally, I'm not sure if I dig the idea of being in an enclosed space with a lot of other people for any length of time, but it's worth mentioning that some sources say it's safer than you may think. With high quality air filters and masked passengers, it seems like with proper precautions and the right airline, which is very important, flying would actually be your safest bet. Now, if I were flying, my airline of choice would be Delta. It's actually always been my airline of choice, but especially now, I feel really good about some of the policies that they have in place, both as far as cancellations and whatnot, but also when it comes to health and safety. Of course, their current policy that had been put in place some time ago, keeping middle seats open so that people can space out a little bit more, is actually going to expire in March. So the big question is going to be, moving forward, are they going to put another policy in place? Are they going to extend this policy? I'm not sure. We'll have to see as time goes on. So this kind of leads me to the big question, like the super big question that we're all here to find out the answer to, and that's, would I do it? Would I take the trip? And even after talking to you here today, I, I just don't feel like I have a really good concrete answer to that. Now, I want to say yes. I want to say that I feel good about traveling to Walt Disney World. And truthfully, I do. I know that if I pick the right airline and if I'm very careful about how I travel and the way I conduct myself when traveling, everything should be fine. I also know that Walt Disney World is doing everything they can to make sure that guests are safe. And I feel really good about that. I really honestly do. That said, I also am not a person who has children and I don't have any high risk individuals in my family, at least not that I am in contact with every day. So it's a little bit different for someone like me. The risk is different. It looks different for someone like me. And of course, I still know that the risk is there. And I, I think it's important to note that. The thing is, and where this all kind of gets a little bit complicated, is how quickly things change. Now, if you are keeping up with everything that's been going on, you know that there are different strains of COVID-19 that have been popping up in the United States. We don't know a whole lot about them. And I will be the first person to say that I don't have a whole lot of information on any of them. Like I said at the beginning of this podcast, I am not a professional. I am not someone who's going to give you anything beyond my opinion. But that's not the only thing that's rapidly changing. There are other things changing, it seems like, every day when it comes to restrictions or how we need to do things, or even what may or may not be open while traveling to Walt Disney World. It's another thing that gets me away from the whole driving bit. It takes days to drive from my location to Orlando. And in the time that it takes me to drive down there, a lot of things could change, not only for Walt Disney World or for Orlando or for Florida, but for all the states in between. And this is something I'm really taking into consideration right now, especially with the recent news that the Biden administration recommends Florida shuts down restaurants and bars and other places where you're not wearing a mask 100% of the time. Now, my feelings on that piece of news or the decisions that are made as a result of it is neither here nor there. But I do think it's an important thing to take note of and to mention here because these are the types of changes, adjustments, suggestions, policies, so on and so forth that I'm talking about when I say that things can change so quickly and without notice. And for me, the more I think about it, the more I think about the way I would travel as opposed to whether or not I actually would. So as of today, in this moment, as I sit here talking to you, my feeling is that yes, I would absolutely jump on a plane, I would absolutely get down to Walt Disney World, I would make sure I'm taking special care in order to stay safe. But will I feel the same in a week, in a month, three months, six months? That's really the million dollar question right now. And 
It's a question that if you're on the fence, I think you really need to ask yourself. What if something changes between now and the time that you intend to visit Walt Disney World, whether it's a change in the virus itself or whether it's a change in policies? Sometimes we have the ability to make decisions for ourselves about this one, but as we've seen with lockdowns and policies and everything that has happened over the past year, sometimes these decisions are made for us. And so how do you feel about that? How would you feel if, let's say, you booked flights and it turns out that you can't get a refund, but you can get a credit? That's something that happened to me. It's something that happened to a lot of other people in 2020 when things got canceled. So this is something I think If you're considering making this trip currently, I think this is just a reality of of what could happen. And if that's something that is not a big deal to you because you'll use those credits later and it's it's no big deal, then that's great. But if you're someone who doesn't want those funds to be tied up or might not be in a position where you can use credits like that later or whatever the case may be, Maybe this is something that isn't for you right now. You know, I know today's topic was a very difficult one to have. And I know even what I just said, the fact that this might not be for you right in this moment isn't easy for people to hear. But I do think that it's important to say that as much as this might stink today, um, I really do think that that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's going to take us a little bit of time to get there, but we will get there. It's it's just, I know it seems like forever, but it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. And before you know it, we'll all be hanging out at Disney again, having a whole new set of memories to to uh, look back on and, and chuckle about and, and have a lot of fun talking about. Um, but for now though, for now, I want to just take a second before we wrap up this podcast, for those of you who have been hanging in there with me for the past almost 18 minutes now, I want to take a second and thank you for sticking in there and listening to my thoughts on this. I really hope that I was able to help you come to some conclusions and try and figure out some things um, about how you feel. As I said earlier, I know that it can be difficult, especially in moments like right now, to try and work out how we feel about different things. And, you know, it's not always easy. But I'm hoping that eh, I've given you some things to think about. and, And I'm also hoping that you will join me in this conversation by telling me some of your thoughts over on the Two Foolish Mortals website. So since we're about to wrap things up, let me go ahead and tell you how you can do that. As you know, Two Foolish Mortals is a website and you can visit that website at two, that's the number two, foolishmortals.com. If you're looking for more information specifically about the podcast, it's really easy to find. It's twofoolishmortals.com slash podcast. There you'll find the show notes for this episode. Like I said, there'll be some links to the CDC website, as well as a link to a post that I've written about this topic. So if there's any thing that I may have forgotten to discuss today. (laughs) Um, You'll see that information over there. So you can read that if you have the time, if you have the will and the energy to do so. You can also find a bunch of other topics over on twofoolishmortals.com. So if there is anything that interests you, whether it is, I don't know, my thoughts on a particular restaurant, I know there are some different posts that are going to be going live in the next few weeks about that. Or maybe it's, you know, finding out more so that you can plan your next Disney vacation. You can find that over on twofoolishmortals.com. You can also click the summon button to talk to us directly. Go ahead and fill out that form and tell us your thoughts and feelings. You can also leave a comment on any of the posts that interest you, including the podcast episode post 
for this. That's a lot of words to say something, including <laughs> the show notes page for this particular episode. That's what I was trying to say. You can leave your thoughts down there. I read through all the comments and I love to hear what you guys have to say. It makes this a conversation, which is exactly what I love. I love talking to you guys. So that's that's a great way to join in the conversation. I also have a Two Foolish Mortals group over on Facebook, if that's your thing. I'll have a link to that in the show notes for this episode. But I think that pretty much does it for today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me. Thanks for having this conversation. Thanks in advance for sharing your thoughts by leaving a comment. And, you know, I hope you have a week that is filled with ghoulish delight. I'll see you guys next time.